Welcome back to Sex and Whiskey, a Gay Crashers podcast. In our series, hosts Nikki and RJ will sip on a dram of the good stuff while discussing the more exciting stuff. We will take you on a journey, exploring whiskeys from around the world, while also educating you on the birds and the bees, especially correcting what school or your parents missed on. Our goal is to promote a safe and fun environment that will leave you empowered and educated on your next bedroom adventure. So, sit back, pour a drink, and get ready for Sex and Whiskey. Welcome back, everyone, for a long-awaited episode. Um, very excited about this one. I am one of your co-hosts. My pronouns are he, him. Uh, my name is RJ Durante, and with me as always is... My name is Nikki, and my pronouns are she, they. And I'm here. Good for me. I showed up. You showed up. I that showed is, up. That's, that's all, that all we can do. Yeah. That is all we can do mm-hmm. in life, in love, in everything. So, Nikki, why is today a special episode? Well, it is October, and October is like the most wonderful time of the year. Agreed. But, oh, we're going to add to that. It's kinktober. We're going to get kinky this month because why not um it's me i'm a co-host i said i wanted kinky (laughs) so kinktober it is um this month was circled on the sex and whiskey calendar it was discussed we were like we need something here and for some reason kinktober just sounds better than any other idea we had so that's why we're doing it now Mm -hmm. um i am going to take more of a listening role uh in this uh because i want to be guided in the world of kink and fetish and bdsm uh so that i myself can one day appreciate what goes into all of this wonder and mystery that is the three topics i just uh talked about so uh nikki where do we start uh we drink we do drink so for those of you who are unfamiliar, you should get familiar and listen to our older episodes. Um, we're going to dive right into our first flight. Uh, I'm going to go first because I can. Um, my three flights today, uh, I unfortunately am in a little bit under the weather and I'm trying to rectify that. So I will be enjoying a hot toddy. Um, in this toddy is a decent amount of 21-year-old McKellen Sherry. I had opened previously uh, for something else, and I figured, why not? It's delicious. So, cheers. Cheers, my friend. And because I can, I'm not drinking whiskey. Um, I am drinking... Dun, dun, dun! I know, right? Yeah, someone just drop a soundboard. We don't have a soundboard. We're not going to invest in one. So. No, we're not. Just like <laughs> pretend, pretend. Yeah. RJ is really good with like weird noises and accents. He's got this. Like it's under control. If y'all have no idea what I have to put up with. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so I'm actually drinking tequila, um, a tequila Blanco. And it's, I'm actually drinking it out of a skull. I'm not, well, the tequila is in a skull. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm drinking it out of glass, but mm. for our listeners, you can't see this, but um, it's a white skull bottle with like black sugar skull designs. And it's by Ka, I think is the name of the company. However, they got bought out. So this bottle is a collectible. And if I left the tequila in it, supposedly I could get like at least $500. I think I spent like $40 when I bought it years ago because it's a wow. skull. And skulls are cool. Uh, fucking dig it. It's October. We're doing spooky shit. And yeah, so it's just white tequila, but it's not the type of tequila you put in your margarita. You sip on it. Mm. So I will be sipping tequila the entire episode because. Oh, so we're going to be doing sips. Kingtober sips. I'm well. I, well, no, I'm sipping on my hot toddy. So, I mean, I'm, I just. I'm, it, I don't. I never take it straight back all at once. I never do our flights like that. No, I just like to savor them the whole time. No, I bet you do. Until until we're done. (laughs) Until it's all gone. Until they're completely empty. Oh, we're off. This is not (laughs) our normal (laughs) recording time either. Yeah, it's 
Uh, th- three o'clock, three o'clock, um, three o'clock, two o'clock, uh, mm-hmm. spread over time zones. <laughs> this is it's day normally, drinking. normally we do this at like seven, eight o'clock at night, a, a reasonable hour to be uh, doing anything involved uh, alcohol, but uh, it's not five o'clock happening. somewhere, it's just not here or there. Um, <laughs> I just, I love, that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, this, yeah, is this is okay. Side note, you already got me sidetracked that um the sugar skull makeup like when uh i look at like the festivals for dia de los muertos Mm -hmm. um and uh when certain party goers do like the the makeup Mm -hmm. and i see that makeup um i find that person attractive like more attractive and i don't know what that means or what that like what that is but i could google it it's probably a thing (sighs) it's everything's a thing there's everything is a thing but honestly like there's nothing wrong with that no Um, absolutely not yeah so i'm drinking tequila i just had a sip it's been Mm -hmm. a while since i've just sipped on tequila so i like oof that's i just wasn't ready okay (laughs) um it's absolutely uh, all right so we're gonna talk about kinky things yes now to start um Mm -hmm. i am going to ask uh for you to choose a safe word and for those who don't know a safe word is a designated negotiated word between partners to stop any and all play uh so play can refer to all sorts of shit like the stuff we're going to talk about or you know at sometimes it is directly like related to sex like oh you are having sex stop that so there's play and then there's sex so you'll figure it all out the point is if anyone is uncomfortable and things need to stop having a safe word that both partners uh have negotiated they know that means all activity stops is i don't know it's the way to go uh also it prevents you know so i don't know if y'all know this but uh sometimes people just say yes or no um in a like i don't know sexy voice that i'm not gonna do right now it's too early for that uh and maybe get so caught up in the moment that you don't process like, oh, I need to stop. Um, so it's a word that's meant to be jarring that stops mm-hmm. all play. And because RJ is new to this kinky world, I don't know how new you are, actually. I you probably have secrets. Um, I want to make sure he's comfortable. What and so we're going to choose. Calling out. You know nothing. <laughs> how I just dare you. I told you I was trying to be a nicer person and I'm yes. failing. Like, yeah. I've failed so many times. I'm trying to yeah. be a nice person. You know anyway, what they say? Okay. Trying is halfway to failing. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> they, I don't know who they are, but fine. Oh. RJ, what mm-hmm. is your safe word if I say something that is a topic that you're like, no, make it stop? My safe word. Um, banana banana okay banana banana so if rj says banana that means everything stops mm-hmm. um honestly oh never mind no nope, we're just we're going with banana i was gonna <clears throat> commentary but oh we are already a hot mess How's that i like this commentary i think no. it's important that we okay. derail this conversation no. <laughs> and go back to this you All can't right. just drop that and walk away all right no actually no like okay i said banana and then you had a reaction to it (laughs) but all right okay we've had this conversation offline yes we have but when sexting i think emojis there should be like a designated emoji (laughs) he just almost choked on his drink that was great but like like a designated stop emoji like a and (laughs) Because the emojis, they get weird. So while sexting, I think that should be the new like dom sub safe word thing or anything. Just like a really fucking weird emoji. What would your emoji be? (laughs) But we interpret emojis very differently. (laughs) Very differently. Yeah. Um, What would my safe word emoji be? Yeah. Uh, That demon face. (laughs) The red demon face. What does that mean? The red demon? Yeah, the red demon. Not the purple one? 
because that purple demon means keep going i'm sorry oh, it, the, no no the red okay so it's the one it's, it's the like red a de- face it's like a devil man and it's it's got like uh like it looks hair around it and it's got like fangs okay so all right i mean <laughs> as long as you're negotiating that that is the clear meaning of that emoji <laughs> i thought you were talking about the purple you don't one own the, the emojis all right you don't own i'm the not definitions saying that i'm saying emojis. with your partner with your partner you negotiate that while sexting this emoji mm-hmm. means stop the other thing you could do is just have it be pause mm-hmm. um you know, type that out or say it my wife and i innocently use the emoji that melts into the floor as a moment of embarrassment, like I just said something so embarrassing, I want my body to turn into a puddle like Alex Mack and just disappear. <laughs> Apparently, what does it also mean, Nikki? What else does that emoji mean? <laughs> Gotta try to say this with a state a straight face. It means my pussy is so wet, I'm melting through the floor. <laughs> he hates it. <laughs> I don't like, hate it. I he's don't just like, hate it. Why did I ask for Why'd that you make question? emojis horny? All right. Why'd you make them horny? Some of them are very horny. I will. I will agree. The ones that we not, talked about. I did not make. I'm not saying not... you personally. Okay. I'm not saying you personally. I'm okay. just saying this poor emoji is melting into the floor because they are so embarrassed, and then they get completely just put into that position. That emoji for me means, oh, fuck me. Yes, that's what that means. Because it's like you're soaked, you're flooded, and then you just can't. Do you remember a couple episodes ago when (laughs) we turned on a vibrator (laughs) and you had a Pavlovian response? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. That emoji is going to turn into a Pavlovian response. What the fuck were we talking about? We were talking about Inktober. I want okay. you to, I have no idea about any of them. I need them. Like, what is the difference? What is the, okay. the, the actual difference between Stuff. those things? Okay. Yes. We're going to start. Uh, so kink is an umbrella term. Uh, it's mostly considered to be the opposite of any sort of quote unquote vanilla sex. And please check out our previous episode on vanilla sex. Uh, it's fantastic. But we, it's something we discussed last time and vanilla sex for us or for where I'm coming from, uh, is basically somebody's, you know, comfort level, their typical style of sexual activity with their partner or by themselves or partners, rather than this idea of prude sex. So if you're in this idea that vanilla sex means just prude, fucking stop it. Just please stop it. That's not, that's not what it's about. Check out our previous episode. Um, kink is fairly broad and people's perception of kink behaviors are definitely worth discussing and defining certain aspects because folks are confused and that's fine we're in like such a well it's not fine but it's like I get it we're in a sex repressed culture people are confused they have uh their experiences with kink are probably you know what they see on television film books things like that so we want to break it down. I'm going to start with saying, though, that kink is not some sort of pathology to be diagnosed. Um, there are certain behaviors that used to be considered like a psychological problem where you were going to be diagnosed with uh, with a disorder because you were into something. And until recently, even in the, it's the DSM Diagnostic Statistical Manual for Psychiatrists, there were certain things that you would consider kinks. Um, essentially given a pathology and it's like you have a psychiatric disorder I'm not going to get into the background of how that's changed because there are changes being made but I think it's important to realize that just because somebody is into feet or golden showers and water sports or they like monster smut erotica and art they might like cnc scenarios they want a hand to the throat they want to get slapped across the face they want to call someone daddy or have somebody call them daddy it does not mean that there's something wrong with them there is nothing wrong rj takes a sip he's like i what did i step my get into i'm just listening avidly Uh uh-huh right um 
So any questions right now? No, I'm good. I'm I'm I'm, sure? I'm I'm I want to go deeper. Oh god, <laughs> stop it, stop it, stop it. I'm like screaming at myself to not make it weird. When we're like what are we already talking about? It's exactly like, don't make it horny, Nikki. <laughs> like, oh fuck, where are we right now? God <laughs> damn it. All right. Uh so People normally don't associate vanilla behaviors and kinky activities, but I want to say that um, those two things actually overlap quite a bit. Um, for example, something like sensory deprivation, that is considered a kinky element. However, you might have couples engaged in quote unquote vanilla activities. It's vanilla for them, but the sensory deprivation is something simple like um, a, like an eye mask and feeding feeding them strawberries and that can be a sort of sensual trust building connection because somebody uh, can't see what they're being fed and so it requires trust of the partner and sensory deprivation does fall under this sort of kinky umbrella and people may not think oh I'm being kinky well maybe maybe there's a bit of kink or maybe it's just foreplay I don't so this stuff to consider and with sensory deprivation sex may come in vanilla sex might come in so with kinky situation someone might just be eating some pussy and it's not a non-vanilla behavior it's just what they do so yeah. keep in mind that those two <clears throat> things are very similar uh and can be shared so i'm gonna stop there so i can take a drink rj do you consider yourself to be a kinky person though um probably not i mean i i think it's something that you know you're partner you and your partner have to kind of like work on together um i mean you just can't outwardly be like you know uh here's a blindfold and then here's this and this and this and this is what we're doing now um mm -hmm. i'm assuming it's it has to be a two-way street it has to be consensual it has to be you know something and i think that's kind of like where one of my bigger questions is like, how do you manage a kink for one that is not for someone else? That is an excellent question. The management comes down to communication. And if it's always going to be about consent and if a consenting adult, uh, wants to do an activity that is kinky and their partner is on the fence about it and they're like oh maybe i'll try this for you that's where a conversation needs to happen if they say no no means no means no mm -hmm. um period and i think with kink specifically when we talk more about bdsm which we'll get there um consent is crucial it's everything it's communication it's like the foundation of it is consent so if you are in a relationship and you want to try something um it's a conversation with your partner and i also realize that sometimes bringing up a kink is uh might be embarrassing mm -hmm. uh however i have like a whole philosophy on talking about that where finding some sort of way to just like strip away the shame someone might feel um so in general when practicing a new sexual behavior i don't recommend drinking or smoking mm -hmm. i recommend sobriety mm -hmm. if trying something new i also recommend when having a conversation and communicating with someone about your kinks Find a way to relax, be in a mindset of you already had fun, like you went on a date or you went out and did some stuff and maybe you've had drinks and it's like, okay, let's play a game where we talk about what we're into. Make that playful, write down a list of things you're into. And then when it comes to negotiating those things, go back and be sober for it because mm -hmm. you don't want to agree to something while you've been drinking, even if the plan is not to engage in that behavior that night. So. Yeah. That's 
my whole spiel on how to communicate about I'm into this, but are you, do you want to participate? And I'm actually going to shout out to kinkacademy.com. I believe that's who it is. Kink Academy, they've been around for 15 years and they have uh, couples workbooks, like a yes, no, maybe book. And that's an excellent way to just work with a partner uh, and say like, would you do this? Would you not do this? And the reason is, is it lists like all of these kinks. And so both of you are having to like think about them. And it's a great way. So I'm going to shout them out. Um, hope that's okay. But yeah. Yeah. I really like Kink Academy stuff. And you're you looking can... at me like I'm going to be like, no. I don't know. <laughs> like, pull it, I pull it, scrap everything. You're no, we're episode's over. over. We're done. So, um, I leading into that, um, we have, I know we have a ton to discuss. Is there certain kinks that kind of, are more not even just popular but like more like discussed and widely known like above others like what like what would be like a mainstream kink that you know most of the public would be familiarized with probably like simple bondage not mm -hmm. uh, not the more extreme levels of bondage like a rope bondage and is a very BDSM practice we're not really going to talk too much about rope bondage today because that's like a whole subject but I'm talking you see those like kinky furry handcuffs and mm -hmm. these kits like these starter kit um and it'll so that's a light bondage um I don't recommend handcuffs ever actually I I recommend something I don't I would recommend researching it and yeah. looking at materials and really understanding it we don't have time to get into it but no. if you're like i want to be kinky those furry handcuffs not the way to go aren't great they're not, not I, I do not think they're the way to go um especially mm -hmm. when starting out but sometimes those kits come with the sensory deprivation uh mask so just mm -hmm. like a sleeping mask and uh, a feather duster so that's kind of this pleasure dynamic where you can't see what's happening and then the duster is really soft against the skin and sometimes more and more I'm seeing writer's crops in those so that's impact play that's several types of play in one kit and if you don't know what you're doing with a writing crop please don't please just <laughs> don't oh good lord don't um but I think yeah bondage that simple one is the thing most people think about with a kink mm -hmm. the and that sort of brings us to this idea of a fetish um the joke of it i don't like that it's a joke but it's just sort of this societal thing like ooh, a foot fetish and i want to take a second to define fetish versus kink because a fetish is not a kink a fetish is something that's very specific it's uh, it might be under the umbrella of kink but Fetish is not like, it's not a sex, sexual attraction to somebody while doing a behavior. It's a behavior or um, usually an object more than likely with a fetish is needed to, for any sexual gratification during mm. sex. Um, so it's possible, for example, for foot play to be kinky and it's part of the sexual experience however someone with a foot fetish they need foot play in order to re like get their gratification mm. they need it it's not a like ooh, that's fun because yeah it might feel good for some people who are comfortable to have like their toes sucked they might be like oh that's really hot it can actually be a bit of depending on who it is like some degradation play um with dirty feet and it's like you're gonna suck my feet and you're gonna lick them because they're dirty because this is degradation and we're gonna talk a bit about that maybe more later fetishes though required like i need that to get off essentially mm -hmm. so that's the difference between like a fetish <clears throat> and a kink um any questions about fetishes we're not gonna go really deep into fetishes because that is a time um but when someone says they have a fetish, think, I'm not getting off unless I get that thing. Got it. Okay. We're good. 
yeah no it just i'm 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 trying to just embrace all this and take it all in i think it's you you unfortunately and and this is the dilemma with like you know how things have become mainstream and and how um we get information now uh it just a lot of this is lumped together into one thing and they obviously each have their own component and they each have their own set of like not rules but like kind of guidelines for you know what's appropriate what's not um and i think we've kind of uh gone in a bad direction at times uh i think of something like 50 shades of gray um <laughs> that yeah oh, no, i'm sure there i'm sure there's a lot Oof. uh a lot there but even even my, on my avenue i i remember being a nurse um uh at uh at the hospital i worked at and um some of my older female co-workers were reading it and they're like you got to read this book like you got to like absolutely and it it just it looked like kind of just like a little bit of like smut like just basic just smut but the way that like power dynamics were used and it just it felt dirty at times um and it kind of introduced middle america to bondage but in the worst way um, similar to how I think when you get second and third hand information about like vaccines from a Facebook meme <laughs> that like some person shared, like that's how I, that's, that's how I view it. And it kind of sets back a movement, um, and a positive one at that. If like, we're just trying to kind of explore our own sexualities and expand and, and kind of normalize is a tough word uh just trying i think acceptance in like the communities as well um and then this book hits and everyone's buying the furry handcuffs and trying like light like play. branded yeah, yeah like they had a like, whole branding deal around it. um i i mean i remember talking to and i didn't even mention this to you i just thought about it um uh at the time i remember uh, a friend of mine worked at the ed and there was an uptick of issues involving um, broken bones due to um, like being tied up improperly. Oh no. Um, and again, this is like, I, I'm not talking, oh, there was like 50 and one. I'm like, there was like definite incidences um because i brought up this episode to to him and he's like funny story uh, um uh so people out there got hurt because they saw or read this fun thing in the book or saw the movies eventually down mm -hmm. down the road um and we're like yeah. yeah like i don't need any education on this i don't need like it, it, it looks easy enough let me um let me attach uh my partner to a bunch of wires and hang them and like it just that's it blows my mind how you you are like yeah i can do this too without any knowledge you don't i mean some people do you're not like oh i'm gonna buy uh, 40 slabs of two by fours and build a shed no instructions needed i got this that's not what you do obviously mm -hmm. um so yeah i just i i think it it sucks in in the aspect that i know there is this um, community out there that is very willing to educate and very willing to kind of open its doors and uh, allow you to better understand these dynamics. Um, and we are lucky enough to go to, uh, we're going to plug this, uh, Exotica, uh, the Exotica Expo um, in New Jersey. And we're going to meet some wonderful people there and kind of discuss topics like this. And um, obviously there's knowledgeable people out there. I don't know why you're taking advice from a book that was actually written as fanfic for twilight and then converted into a bondage horror story <laughs> so yeah all right that was that's my that's well my. so we'll like just to go from there since we're talking about bondage um the 50 shades was really about bdsm okay and BDSM stands for bondage, domination or discipline, sadism or submission and masochism. But it is truly about power dynamics. Mm -hmm. So something that you saw in 
50 shades was the power dynamics getting fucked up to the point where it's like toxic um mm -hmm. it's manipulation it's not what a proper power dynamic exchange power exchange uh would look like for for bdsm communities there's yeah. a reason people were pissed because it's like no that's manipulation and um you know i, I remember there's a scene in there where so like i mentioned safe words she didn't do a safe word and he got really mad and blamed her and then they like broke up and it was just some a spoiler alert i don't even know if it was quite it i just remember oh, we're gonna get scene. yelled at we're gonna <laughs> Yeah, well, don't just, inbox us. Yeah, no, please leave us the <laughs> fuck alone. Um, but it was a scene where this person, he as a dom, was like, "Oh, she can take it, even though she's never done it before." And he, yeah. I think, he canes her. And a cane is a type of like caning is a type of impact play that is fairly intense. And if you're new to it, probably hurts like, like a son of a bitch. I mean, but the pain is part of it. Like, there's yeah. good pain part of it but that wasn't the situation here it was someone who just said oh you're saying yes to this let me just do it and it's a part of a power dynamic relationship um so if you were to have like a, a dom and a submissive that dom needs to understand the limits of the submissive and a submissive can say give me more give me more give me more and they're new to the game and they're mm -hmm. so addictive to the feeling of submission and all of the feel-good things that happened that happen like with submitting mm -hmm. that the dom might just get lost as well and somebody gets hurt and that can happen even with folks who have experience uh, yeah. people need to pause it's all about consent and communication so if you do not take that time in a bdsm style relationship or dynamic um, that can be very dangerous i will also say something that i really wish i knew that honestly i like wasn't planning on bringing up 50 shades because I'm well sorry. no no, 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 no I'm don't, sorry. Don't, don't apologize because yeah. i just forgot about it and i was in a yeah. good place <laughs> um but i think something that was problematic about that and how bdsm is portrayed is it's a lot of folks think it's violence thinks uh believe it's violence against women and that's not what it's about mm -hmm. there's also been a history of abuse cases stemming from bdsm relationships mm -hmm. and that type of stuff right there um where bdsm is actually criminalized technically because in some places not everywhere um because of impact play yeah you know so if you consent to impact play which is spanking you know writer's crop whips um i'm paddling i'm just like i can just like i'm looking kind of at the wall behind me and uh just being like how flogging that's another flogger like i just mm. in this room i have like 10 impact play elements like that implements whatever i can't talk it's just fuck. tequila i should have some more but um hey, people can get hurt mm -hmm. and maybe not think that they were ready for that and somebody who is holding the crop or the flogger may not have the practice that they need to do it safely so that is something that was brought up uh, mm -hmm. with the 50 shades era and i think what it does though is it gives a chance for reflection of what is the actual right thing however we live in a culture where it's just like ah fuck knee jerk and people are going to have their initial reaction and not bother to pause and step back and take a look at what is actually going on. So, which is a perfect time for us to pause and take a step back and have a drink. I'm going to have I think, pouring more tequila. I think we need one. We need um, one. I'm going to have another nice little drag of my hot toddy, which is now a cold toddy. So, hmm. does tequila taste better when it's like before four o'clock? Um, tastes the same. I, yeah, it tastes like the I same. haven't I haven't day drank in a very long time. Like do I'm you never. Drink I, do I tequila? No, do you drink tequila like on its straight own? on the mm -hmm. rocks? Um, I don't. Not on the rocks. 
there was a time i'm very particular it has to be uh patron um silver uh that's the only one i could like do on the rocks i've tried avion i think i've had on the rocks before but that's that's like i'm going out to not remember or i it's, you know how alcohols affect you differently oh yeah wine happy awful hangover tequila party awful hangover scotch mellow not really a hangover beer crazy <laughs> no hangover oh yeah yeah i, I don't know we don't need i'm, I'm not gonna go there we're not gonna go okay all right that, no, i'm uh, just pouring my heart out here here we go no 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 i'm not uh, gonna go there okay. because i'm gonna be okay. like really embarrassed i'm like list off 10 different types of alcohols my specific just tequila. what is te is tequila like you're happy is your is your happy your happy dance aquavit is my happy liquor to drink um mm -hmm. tequila i like i like to do flights and i prefer actually going into a mezcal which okay. reminds me a lot of tasting scotch so i get that i wouldn't say when i drink tequila i am not drinking to get drunk Mm -hmm. because i don't want to feel that with tequila yeah so and i'll only drink it straight i don't do shots it needs to be like a sippable tequila because i like i can put down shots of anything oh, i just don't need to be doing that because oh, i am boy. i am grown oh, and that shots are a great way to have a moment where you're like fuck what did i just say so if you're offered a shot okay so say a shot of tequila comes across with a lime and a little little salt. Are you taking the shot? No. Good for you. Mm -mm. I had like that happen recently. So poorly. Yeah, where they were like, let's do shots. And they ordered shots. And I was like, I don't want this. <laughs> and I feel like that makes me seem kind of uppity. But I no. just know you what stuff I can to do in the morning. And, and you just drink. And as yeah. soon as shots like you hear shots and you're like we're the we're getting just, fucked up the night like, just don't it just, do just it's one gone. It's don't gone. do one you just shots we're doing shots multiples and i'm like i only like multiples one way and that's orgasms okay sorry had to go there what were we talking about i did have a game set up like this a, sort of set up is brought to you by bondage academy that's no, bondage academy. Kink, kink. and kicking oh my god i already ruined it you already ruined it. There's probably something. I already ruined the multiples. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. It's fine. Just gotta try again. Just we were talking about BDSM, yes, but we I think I'm. You made a game? Not really a game. I just had an idea. So you're going to give me a number one through 25, and I have a random list of different kinky behaviors. Okay. I'm 19. Getting... Okay. Wow. And I'm going to 19. All right. RJ, what do you think a breeding kink is? Nick I'll Cannon. explain it when you Nick get it wrong. Cannon. Um, <laughs> no. uh, uh, a breeding kink is, I guess, oh, so this is, okay. So my question here is, because this is definitely has to be a, a two-way situation because there has to be, there is someone who is being bred and there's someone who is capable of being the breeder um so i'm i'm assuming if the breeding kink was someone who could be bred this is sounding awful already but I'm yeah, just, no, gonna, just try i'm gonna power through do, do your very um, best I'll, I'll that person has to be like i want to get fucked and you fill me up like bareback just unloading in me and like i that's how i get off and then the the breeder is like I'm going to fuck you bareback and unload in you. And that's a breeding kink. So, I mean, essentially it's the desire to impregnate or be impregnated and your fantasies and sex scenes might revolve around that idea. Um, it doesn't have to be someone who can or cannot get pregnant. Mm -hmm. It There are actually sex toys that simulate um ejaculation that okay. you know, two people can use and have that sort of breeding kink thing so it can be two people with vulvas doing it mm -hmm. um, 
it's something that's kind of gender affirming for some folks if they don't have a vulva, but um, to be bred, the idea of yeah. being bred. Um, so it's the idea of impreg like impregnating someone or being impregnated mm -hmm. is part of it. However, it can go much further than that in terms of it can go into power dynamic style mm -hmm. thing. Um, it can go. It really, I think power dynamic is the one I'm really thinking of where I am breeding you and you are an object for me to breed. So you think of breeding on the farm where mm -hmm. some, like there's even a device that is put into an animal to make sure they are inseminated. Like, so you can get yeah. into scenes all the way like that, but mm -hmm. at the very basics, it's like the kink is, I want to, I want to get you pregnant, but not necessarily doing something that will and like end in pregnancy like safe sex yeah please have safe sex uh between partners who know that stuff like know their std sti status uh someone is on birth control whatever it looks like mm -hmm. so there's that all right good job i'm gonna make you choose another number oh god yes i like this okay uh 13 all right let's go to 13 Cuckolding. Ah, uh, cuckolding. Um, to be cucked. Uh, that is when uh one partner brings in another person, uh, and watches as that person that their partner is fucked. I'm assuming. Um, and they get off on what? Are they getting off on watching someone else give? pleasure to their partner or are they getting off on the idea that the like i'm trying to i'm i don't know where the the like it, the... it can it can be actually so like giving there are people um where it is a kink to give pleasure to the partner like that mm -hmm. is a kink so that could come into that but with watching somebody have sex or pleasuring your mm -hmm. partner uh i know sometimes in that dynamic it's like enjoying watching that sometimes like when a lot of it plays into uh humiliation as mm -hmm. well so there's also an implied humiliation element for some people not everybody yeah. uh like there's being aroused by sharing your partner and mm -hmm. there may not be a humiliation ele uh, elephant <laughs> element yeah. However, for some, it's like, oh, I can't satisfy my partner. I'm going to watch this person do it. Even though they are capable of satisfying their partner, they're going to get humiliated by the act of some watching somebody else do it better than them. Mm -hmm. And that's another element of it. However, in general, yeah, um, it's more common among men. But any like that really probably has more to do with any sort of study on it. Who's who's the one participating in the study? Yeah, uh, usually cis, yeah, cis folks. So it's more popular among men, according to some studies. But it really can be for anybody else. Can have the humiliation aspect or not? I wouldn't say it's the same as um, just having like a threesome or mm -hmm. something like that. It, that's a different thing. There's a bit of I don't want to say a psychological element, but there's a little bit more at play. Got it. So choose a number. Uh, five. Exhibitionism. Tell me all about that, what you know. Uh, exhibitionism is just the pleasure that you receive from intercourse in public, right? Like being viewed by other people. Yeah, getting yeah. turned on by being observed, mm -hmm. uh, getting caught. Oh, getting caught is part of it. So, like, an unintended. Sometimes, sometimes it's. Is sometimes it unintended though? Like your intent? No. Like is your intent? Like okay, so getting caught. Are you like actively in a bad hiding spot because you want to be caught? Are you getting off on wanting to be caught? So, exhibitionism. People think like maybe it's sex in public places, mm -hmm. or maybe it's you're having you're getting railed against a window while your blinds are open. Do you want to get caught or is it the idea of being observed? So whether or not you want to be caught 
Um, and that's the thing like, Ooh, like I'm doing this somewhere. I'm not supposed to, uh, that could be it, one side of the kink or doing it in a way where others are watching you and you know, mm-hmm. they're watching you. That could be the other side. Ah, so can, okay. it's basically okay. think of it as like, you're turned on by getting observed. You may or may not, the turn on may be like, Oh my God, I'm going to get caught. That's mm-hmm. part of the thrill element. And I will say that any sort of sex act that, um, can induce a bit of fear like that thrill of it uh can totally increase the amount of pleasure associated with it because the way neurotransmitters are firing yeah. in the brain so all right i'm gonna i want to pick one more number one more number and then we're gonna then, move on well one more number or we and can I'm do gonna, something else i'm gonna ask you about uh-huh. a kink if there's like a, de- a defined term for this kink or something like that okay uh my number is one through 25 Eight. Water sports. Okay. Water sports. They're banned in the UK. Um, they are? Uh, there was a time that uh, that you type can't... of porn was banned. Oh, okay. In the UK. It's porn, yeah. Um, isn't that just uh, any uh, any play involving any sort of wet is it does it have to be piss or is it just it can be any fluid from the body piss, it's piss piss play. it's just piss yeah. it's just piss yeah. play okay because mm-hmm. i think the term urophilia urophilia is uh-huh. what it is but i hate it when there's a like a scientific term for it because it <sighs> makes it a paraphilia and then it's like oh there's something wrong it's like no nah, mm-hmm. just call it water sports dude you want to piss on something or be pissed on i just keep it simple it is what it is. And if this is something you want to explore, you can invest in waterproof blankets. Uh, mm-hmm. I recommend starting in the shower, though. I was just going to say starting in the shower. I know somebody who was into that. I, yeah, I know a couple of people who are into it. And so. and here's the thing. And I was, and, and I put myself out there, um, but this person doesn't listen to this. Um, we also haven't talked in like 10 years. This is going to be the thing where they get back in touch with you. Yeah, this is going to be the thing. Uh, They wanted to be pissed on. uh, And they wanted to start in the shower. And I wasn't comfortable, like, peeing on somebody. Mm -hmm. And it kind of was like, I mean, there was a multiple of things, but it was like a lot of a lack of communication and boundaries in terms of what one partner wants versus what another partner wants. Um, so uh, if you're out there, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that we didn't have like a mature adult conversation about wants and needs and um, how we could bridge that gap type of thing. Um, I've obviously matured and changed, but uh, yeah, I hope someone out there is pissing on you and like doing what you need to, you know, I hope I, that's the best happy. greeting card ever. Yeah. Like, I haven't heard I from you in a bit. There is just, hope you're getting you know, unleashed on. in a stream. Yeah, and I hope you like it. Sunshine. I will add to that humiliation is sometimes and degradation mm. or pro- like part of that stuff as okay. well. And power play, domination, and submission mm-hmm. that can all be involved in piss play. Um, well, I'm going to call this person out because they also surprised me with knife play. And knife play is something you can't surprise somebody with. So, oh, that's not a surprise. You should. There's that. Mm-mm. And they know who they are. Okay. Um, um, so uh, kink wise. Yeah. Uh, someone who gets. Oh, is this a finish or is this a kink? Uh, well, someone. Okay. Well, the person doesn't need to get. Doesn't need this to get off. I don't think. Um, but they. Enjoy making sure their partner is pleased yeah so that is i've heard uh the term that i have heard used to describe it focuses on gender okay and so i i don't i don't even want to call it that okay because it focuses on gender and I think that's a non-gendered thing. I do think that is a kink. There's probably another term for it that's not um gendered, but mm-hmm. 
having it to where like you are so focused on pleasuring your partner Mm -hmm. and that's it like having them having them come like all of all of that being something that really really turns you on yeah that could be a a kink i would love it if that was just a thing that people liked yeah Uh, does it have to be like is it just i just like if um just something that they enjoy like does it have to be does it have to fit neatly into that box i don't think it needs to fit into a box like when i and i think with what you're describing i think of people who are submissives and Mm -hmm. all they want to do is please their dom and the dom is the dominant partner in bdsm power exchanges Mm. so a submissive all they want to do perhaps is please their dom and that comes from maybe the submissive side of it yeah it really depends on and i I think when we were just kind of going through a few of these kinks and i have like i had a list of 25 that could have been chosen so that's just how many we could have gotten into pause pause for a second pause for a second pick one out of there because i know that was there one that you were like i really want him to pick this one so we can talk about it um let's just oof or is there one that you're just like there he have, will have no idea um you know what blood play and knife play was on the list so mm-hmm. i didn't want to talk about that one so i just Good. like necessarily yeah. i being degraded that that type of kink mm-hmm. i would love to talk about that one um that yeah that was the one i was like hoping you would have commentary on degradation yes um uh, again, I I think I've I've noticed a theme that some of them are definitely power dynamics and mm-hmm. like really focus on there is someone a hundred percent in con- like kind of some sort of control of the situation and then the person is like their aim is to be controlled in that situation. Um, I am familiar with the uh, the dog man. You don't know the dog man. Okay. Um, there was a man in London uh, who was walked around as a dog mm-hmm. um, in front of other people. And like he could, and this person like was like a businessman and, you know, made really good money, obviously, because he paid someone to do this and he had to act like a dog in a park. And I'm a, that's degradation, deg- 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 degradation, deg- degradation. Yeah. That's or humiliation yeah. or humiliation. Um, yeah. That is interesting. There's there's a lot there because I think when you have this weird, not even weird, weird's the wrong word. Um, there's an intersection. Some people are so proud that they could never find them like at what point is your pride and your sexual like needs and desires like at one point does one leapfrog or the other because just imagining that having someone put a collar on me and walk me through a park like i could never do it i could never do it well but but that if was I an extreme that, example but the, no i understand that and and yeah. it's a it's an awful like where I'm picking like the highest form. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it, it, it could be as simple as like uh I'm have no other thing. I keep going back to the dog. I, I, I mean I, I could give examples of what would happen. Dog. Stop thinking about please stop. Please stop thinking about that damn dog. Mm. <laughs> well I can give examples of other behaviors that mm-hmm. might yeah. be involved, including being spit on being slapped across the face perhaps if i mean everything's negotiated you make sure all of that is every every behavior involved with this is okay oh my god Um, they wanted to be hit across the face like slapped you just brought oh oh no oh god i'm sorry okay i i had like a i think i had like an intro to like bdsm like type of like no, well no because we just talked about the it's an umbrella and would um but i i really there was a lot thrown out at me at a an age that i don't think i was ready to like 
understand it or appreciate a lot of this, but this partner, yeah, they wanted to get hit across the face and uh, light choking. Uh, they wanted to be called names. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just not super comfortable doing that. Um, so, yeah. I will I say, was... so I, I like this talking about this kink because people get uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, people question because it, there's a power dynamic thing. But someone who is a submissive mm -hmm. in BDSM style stuff, or just that's not even it. Maybe it's just like, hey, we're fucking and I really want to, I really want you to just fuck me up and call me yeah. a slut or a whore. And I think that's the two words that I'm associated with where I see people be like, oh, no, 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 you can't use that word. That's disrespectful. You might meet somebody with this type of kink who wants to be called those things yes. when getting fucked. But if you ever fucking said that to their face outside of it, that's a no. Just an FYI. But there are people who want to be called that, called a you, name that you, you may really disagree with. Just described the exact situation <laughs> yeah. that this person would, she, this person uh uh was like i like when you're fucking me i want you to put your hands around my throat and call me a fucking slut a dirty fucking slut and i in my mind i was like how do you separate this moment and then in any future argument or disagreement like any like i know this is associated with a positive feeling and memory of me but also there is a voice in you that has heard me call you like a fucking slut and i wasn't i i don't know i was in my own head about it a lot and yeah. obviously there was a ton of other shit that was going on again same knife person um but yeah they like but that got them off and it was one of the like you even I was in a bad spot where I was like, yeah, if this is what you want. Um, and you just like go along with it. Um, now I'm older, wiser, mature. And I know kind of where my, you know, I should have had my hard stop and my safe words and stuff like that. And um, because I, that's a hundred percent a safe word situation, even though you're not the one that the action, I guess, is being done to. The, the, uh, the person with the power in the power dynamic should be able to stop everything, no matter what both partners should be able to yes i'm like uncomfortable that that happened to you yes. like that's not how any of these kinks should work they should never be one-sided and you asked the question earlier what happens when somebody wants something and the other doesn't you don't push for it that's mm. that's what it is period because of stuff like that like yeah. you're uncomfortable and that's not fair how is that a pleasurable experience for you long term? I think I was just really excited to have sex. Um, so I think, I think I'm just I real just, happy to be here. I'm. Is that it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just I'm just I'm having so time happy here. to be here. <laughs> this is great. Thank you. I appreciate this. Um, oh man, no. I was taken for a ride, apparently. I was just, I was a crash test dummy for this person. I, and again, things that you realize like later on. And obviously this person had a lot of uh, other, I'm really railing on this person. But again, I don't think they listen. And if they do, I'm sorry. I haven't named you. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, there was a lot of, I mean, power in the sense, too, of, like, this person would, you know, threaten to self-harm and stuff like that. And there was, like, there was a lot of, like, if, if needs were met and stuff like that and, like, a lot of, well, you, why don't you love me? I thought you'd love me. Like, so if you love me, you would do this stuff. And, and that, like, kind of um, – how we're play dynamics, I guess, is the uh, the way to put that. But, but that's not if... that's not what that is. That's just straight manipulation. Yeah. So, listeners, if you're out there and you find yourself in a very similar situation, we are uncomfortable. Um, and and don't feel like you have the voice to say anything. Uh, say something. Do something. Get out of the relationship. Um, I was get out of that fucking relationship. Yes. If you 
that yes like i don't let it go to 10 months and you know just stop it yeah fuck it's not yeah it's not i'm like i'm mad as somebody who um is more of a dom than anything else which is why i like talking about this stuff the idea of somebody forcing another person to be a dom essentially in a power play dynamic even if this isn't bdsm and bdsm i consider more of a lifestyle and people who practice it really will tell you it's a lifestyle um in terms of power dynamics and the way it can unfold and we probably will not at all be able to scratch that surface today however people who manipulate to be put in a situation where they are the submissive in a power play it that happens it does happen it happens both ways yeah. it happens with doms as well if you love me you will do this for me happens mm -hmm. a lot when the person is dominating so no matter what, that's an unhealthy behavior. If you ever yeah. feel manipulated, that's not what BDSM is, but that's never, ever, ever what should be happening in sex or no sex, like a relationship, just anything with a friendship. Agreed. But especially with something as intense as kinks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really a whole thing. And do we want to have a quick drink and we can talk a little bit about aftercare? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm gonna need. You some need aftercare. some aftercare. You need some aftercare. You need some aftercare. Need okay. Aftercare. Um, just gonna put more. I had like a filled set amount that I was going to drink, and I just feel like I'm saying like, oh yeah, I don't drink that much tequila. Meanwhile, glug 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 glug. I know. Like if there was like yeah, cut away to like clips of me just adding more tequila to my cup. Ah. <sighs> Everything's fine. We had the budget for that and an editor and everything like that. But. Yeah, we have all of that, all of that money from yes. sponsors paying us. And what was the Kink Academy? I think it was Kink Academy. Yeah. And in dot com. And they're like, I think they're a nonprofit. They have such good. Ah, we'll, we'll I'll talk about them in the art, like the notes for this episode. Kinkacademy.com. Learn to sub this dumb. Okay, no. <laughs> All right. I want to talk Use about promo code tequila. No, no, RJ. No, no, it's not. I'm done. I'm done. You're done. Aftercare. What's aftercare? I'm going to back up just a little bit. Please and do. talk about. I want to talk about two things. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea of dom space and subspace. And BDSM is a very intense psychological moment, mm -hmm. depending on what is happening. And there are studies that talk about how neurotransmitters in the brain change, um, adrenaline, cortisol levels, and all of that shifts. And for certain, for DOMS, they can kind of enter this state of flow. Mm -hmm. and it's very intense like you're in your moment if you uh, i have adhd i get into weird like flow style focus states mm -hmm. um that are great it's kind of like hyperfixation, but not not really but i get i'll get into these places with that where i'm just like yeah here i go i'm gonna put the work in and i'm feeling it and i'm vibing and you're just so in the moment and it's a wonderful feeling and mm -hmm. subspace is very similar and that you are so in the moment and it's a wonderful feeling and you have all of these feel good chemicals and you have adrenaline mm -hmm. uh, going through your body that has been shown it has shown that people who participate in bdsm properly with consent all of that shit don't be a dick actual really thinking about what bdsm is all about have decreased anxiety and they have more of an ability to express what their boundaries are their mm -hmm. desires clear are you know clearly expressed as yeah. well because they have to be with bdsm a successful scene also really creates a lot of connection and intimacy mm -hmm. so let's talk about a scene where somebody says um and a scene is usually what is referred to with bdsm uh, and there's prep work that goes into it. There's conversations, negotiations, all of 
Like everyone's hydrated. Everyone's had a meal. We're not drunk. There's a lot that goes into it. Imagine having a scene where somebody is tied up and that submissive person is being called a slut, slapped, spit on, you know, choking on a whatever, choose a body part. Uh, But being like really, it seems like roughed up, like rough Mm -hmm. sex everything and it's all completely consensual and you have all of these feel-good things like hormones going through the body like neurotransmitters everything's vibing and then it stops because the scene is over everyone got what they came for what is your body going to do in that crash after there's a lot of stuff that just happened and especially with adrenaline everything's sort of getting taken away what happens after that's where aftercare comes in because it is very, very intense to go through something like that and not have feelings after, um, aftercare looks different for everybody. So for a submissive, depending on what you were doing, like say there was some spanking and it was pretty intense. Maybe that submissive needs to be held, uh, taking care of any impact play things at all doms if you feel the need to be a dom and you're going to do any impact play you better take care of that sub and all of the welts any bruises any red marks like take care of that person that's part of aftercare they might yeah so someone might need to be cuddled they may need just regular quote-unquote vanilla sex uh go get them some water a meal you talk to the person And say, what do you need after this? Because this is going to be very intense. And if it's your first time and maybe that person doesn't know what they need, you listen. You just ask, what do you need? And the submissive asks as well, like, hey, what are you going to need? That's a negotiated thing. It's different for everyone. I know with doms, one of the bigger things is say say I just like totally fucking owned somebody and called them a whore and just all of this stuff that. I like it was all negotiated a day or two later I might be like god I fucking did that to another human being Mm -hmm. are they okay so I want to check in with them but I also need to check in with myself and so for you when you were describing being asked to do something that was way outside of your comfort zone and not negotiated and not even really discussed no that feeling of being the person who did it is and the guilt associated with it Mm -hmm. that's real life which is why aftercare is so important. I think that power dynamics and whether you do BDSM is just a you know, bedroom activity or kitchen, like wherever you're fucking. And, and it's not necessarily about sex. BDSM is not necessarily just about sex. Um, I would actually say it's about other things before it's about sex. Wherever you are participating in it, if it's an isolated, like you do scenes or you are in a 24 seven power, total power exchange relationship where, you know, you're a dom and you live a lifestyle with a sub and there are set rules 24 seven and that's all negotiated. You really have to show up and listen to your mind, listen to your body and do the same for the other person. You have Mm -hmm. to be vulnerable. And that's why I love BDSM. It requires so much vulnerability on both parties, like from both parties or all parties could be more than two parties. And there's an amount of consent and communication in there that we don't see in just regular relationships. Yeah. And I don't want to keep going back to the experience you had, but was that there, that communication? Well, I put it out there. I would, I'm the the case study today. I'm fine with that. Well, and I, I, (laughs) I feel like you were put on the spot. And so it's like, I really, it's like talking about it, even talking about it gets really intense. And I'm just like, Hey, are you okay? What do you need from me? Like, like, seriously, like, what do you need from me? I, 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 nothing. I think I have don't need a goddamn thing from you, Nikki. Um, no, I think just talking about it was the biggest thing and realizing and, and you helping me realize like that, that situation and you know lucky i found my 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 sense of self them and 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 
confidence to get rid of that relationship. Um, so, I mean, luckily that was there. Um, but yeah, it was, it was weird to have, to go from someone who was a hypersexual person who wanted and required a lot of things and was very um, outwardly expressive with like their needs and wants, but to the point where it was at the detriment to a relationship and to mm-hmm. yourself because it was like, want, 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 need, 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 me, 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 me. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's not how it works. Um, and then going to a partner who, you know, actually communicated and was not like that at all. Um, and then trying to navigate that role and and figure out where my place is there because you're so used to A and now you've jumped to B um, that you 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 don't know what normal is. If your normal is someone who like wants it like three times a day and pulls a knife on you mm-hmm. uh, and then you go to someone who doesn't have that um, same rhythm or, or desire, which is not nec- like everyone's going to be like, oh, that's, you know, No, that's not really a bad thing because it really is a relationship is when two partners agree on what is the right tempo. It's not trying to play catch up. It's also not trying to slow down. Like if your wants and needs are different than your partners, then you're not, you're not going to mix. And I feel like every episode we keep harping on this, that you really need to be in tune with your partner and being in tune is also kind of understanding that not just what they want, it's what you want. It's what both of you want and meeting in that middle ground without sacrificing so much one way or the other that you completely lose sight of what, I mean, there's, there's people out there right now who are in a relationship where they are being asked to do things that they're not comfortable with, but are doing it because of, the rest of the relationship yeah so if you say 90 percent of the time my partner wonderful you know cooking cleaning uh all this other stuff but then that 10 percent inside the bedroom where things are being done or happening that are outside of your control that you're not comfortable with that but you sacrifice that 10 percent because you are so content with the 90 percent you will learn quickly how much that 10% actually does impact the other 90%. Um, And I'm not saying everybody's perfect and everyone has like the 100% all lined up because obviously it's, but you'll start to realize more that, you know, it's not just that 10%. It isn't, there's, there's more there. Um, So uh, I don't know. I, I, I think it's, it's, it's tough to, have had a relationship like like that and then and try and figure out what is quote unquote normal and trying and, and go there but um i don't i don't think anybody really has a normal relationship because mm-hmm. uh, as we talked about vanilla vanilla is is uh, vanilla to me is different to vanilla to nikki to vanilla to you know my buddy down the street um so it's kind of finding that for yourself but uh yeah that that was my aftercare just talking Sometimes you just need to talk. And that is totally a thing that people need. Um, I will say as someone who is very, I believe in the power of BDSM uh, in terms of communication with a partner and exploring vulnerability and think it's an absolutely beautiful thing. I get 1000% horrified and disgusted when I hear anything that is just somebody is uncomfortable in a relationship because of a forced power dynamic and that's where it if a forced power dynamic is it's intense it's not it's not what any of this is about so but thank you so much for sharing everything because i think that really i (laughs) it was so unintended it It was was so unintended but like i i think it's needed and people there's nothing 
don't feel like you're not a kinky enough person for your partner. That's not like, yeah. yeah, it's like King Tober. <laughs> like I'm all like I love talking yeah. about kinks. You're riding and... crop behind you. I'm over here. I had a crop? dark experience once and I'm gonna talk. There's about one it. crop back there and the other one's right here. Oh, like, in there. front of me. It's next there to me. There it is. It's I next to waiting. me. Yeah. I was waiting. Uh, it's right there. My hand's been on it most of the time when not on tequila. You anyway. asked me at the beginning of this episode what I consider. Did you ask me what my kink was or what I found? I don't kinky? remember. Yeah, that was like days ago. <laughs> that was like seven hours ago. That was days ago. Um, uh, what? Kinky, yeah, what is your kink or something? What, or something? What, what's kinky to me? Oh, yeah. Um, I think m- my kink is kind of finding a partner who listens to your wants and needs um and kind of finding a middle ground themselves on their own wants and needs um and uh there's no need for any sort of like power struggle it's just understood and finding that um but i mean i also hit on this earlier i think i do enjoy sometimes my partner's pleasure over my own um i think i've always always kind of been like a a a people pleaser um Mm -hmm. type of thing and i guess that kind of has spread itself where like i have like kind of made it that like mantra where like if they're not having a good time you're not having a good time type um thing um but you said is that even is that really in a, even a kink that might just be the standard where i just actively want to make sure that my partner is enjoying themselves um and i enjoy myself more when they are enjoying themselves um so yeah that's it that's it that's me simple I, I will say i do know people who will orgasm on based on getting their partner off like they're not even doing anything that is how powerful it is not there Um, yet not there yet maybe with practice (laughs) yeah yeah um (laughs) i i do Oof. okay (laughs) (laughs) wow so you want to do the wrap up on this yes i will do the wrap up we'll wrap it up before i say some shit let's wrap it up okay how was the it it was good i'm gonna finish it right now while you yeah. Wrap it up. Well, yeah. Just gotta make sure you finish first and then I can wrap up. Okay. Um we just talked about that. So wrapping this episode up, what did we learn today? We done. learned we learned about <laughs> I was like, we, he's killing me. We learned about the power of relationships. Now we learned about communication again, as always. Um, also, we learned that there is no shame in what you want, as long as it is conveyed in a safe and appropriate manner, where your partner is also in on that discussion and decision. Um, be it humiliation, be it water sports, uh, be it dressing up as uh a member of motley crew whatever it is that gets you off may it be something that can be in, enjoyed not only for you but maybe you could find a little joy knowing that you're comfortable enough to broach that topic with your partner because i know how tough it is there are Plenty of people out there who like feet and will never say a goddamn word about it. There's plenty of people out there who want someone who outweighs them by 200 pounds to just crush them. Want to hear a fucking word about that? I am proud that we are slowly getting into the 
part of social media where you can just say the most wonderful things about what you enjoy. Horny on main. Horny on main. I'm glad we can be horny on main. <laughs> I'm glad we can be like, hey, I enjoy eating ass. I enjoy eating pussy. And I want a woman to literally just sit on my face until I see the light of God. I was like, note, stand up and like with clap that for note, you. With that note, <laughs> um, we want to thank you for joining us on this journey today. And if you want more knowledge about this, search it from reputable places. Um, I know a lot of the, a lot of you will be inclined to look for video resources. I will say that there are some adult websites that do not show the proper care that is involved with it. So be very particular about what you consider the expert on the situation. Um, Nikki gave a shout out to a very specific uh, place, kinkacademy.com. Um, but do your research, communicate with your partner, consent with your partner, uh, and don't surprise someone with a knife. I think that's that's the, the big takeaway. Um, yeah. So for sex and whiskey, <laughs> this has been RJ. Um, and as always, I'm still Nikki. I'm, still I'm Nikki. Still Nikki. Nikki things. Never change. Never change. I, never yeah, change. we'll see. <laughs> All right. We hope you have a wonderful, spooky holiday. We hope you have a wonderful Kinktober. And we will see you back here next time. Thank you and enjoy. <laughs>